All right. Happy Tuesday. So excited you're all here. Good to see your smiling faces. Some of you I got to squeeze in person in Houston last weekend. Looking forward to those of you that I'm going to see in Kansas City this weekend. But we are here tonight on our Zoom. This is our Tuesday night Zoom. And you know that if you've been here the last four weeks, I have been doing a series on fitness, professionals, trainers, athletes. We heard from Ivory Sully, who's a former NFL player. We had yoga instructors, row coaches. We had um, personal trainers. And last week, we had a, a mix of all different types of, of athletes. It's young and a medium age. We're not going to say old. No one's old. Um, but tonight, I'm so excited to have with us Jason Fowler. And Jason has an incredible story that he's going to share with you. He's actually a two-time Ironman triathlon world champion in the hand cycle division, first back in 2009 and then in 2016. Jason has won 11 New England motocross championships by the time he was age 16. And he's going to share his story with you. But age 17, he became paralyzed from the chest down after colliding with a rock while practicing on his motorcycle. But since his accident, he has completed over 150 road races, 50 marathons, and 50 triathlons. Jason currently works as a mental performance coach and motivational speaker. He also has an MBA and worked in the financial and medical device industries over 20 years in various roles. And I am so excited and honored and grateful that he's going to share his information with you tonight. But before I let him come on, and I know you're going to have a lot of questions for him, so you can start dropping those in the chat. I'll get to those a little bit later. I want to make sure you understand. My name is Dr. Stacy. I am not your doctor. I'm not a medical doctor. I have a PhD in integrative medicine and a PhD in functional medicine. So I focus in the holistic or alternative world of different types of tools and techniques and modalities to help the body get into balance. We specifically tonight are going to be talking about LifeWave. And that is what Jason is going to be sharing with you a little bit later on is he's been using this technology for over four years. And I know you're excited to hear what it's done for him in his endeavors all these years. But we are not here to make any claims to treat, prevent, cure, or diagnose any diseases at all. And if you have anything going on with yourself, please check with your healthcare practitioner. If you're on any medications, pregnant, nursing, you know the deal, right? So with that, Jason, I want you to start off by take us back to your beginning. And I, I want to share also with our viewers, when you sent me your pictures and your bio this weekend, I shared that with my husband and you guys have a connection. You were both at uh, doing motocross at the same time. Those you, When you see these pictures I'm going to share with you, I recognize those tube socks from the 80s. <laughs> Thank you. First, thank you so much for having me. And and yes, a, amazing connection with your husband um, from the early days of motocross in the early 80s. And um, a special time, if any of you know anything about motocross and the community of amateur, um, they start as, as young as five and six years old and, and um, amazing community. So yeah, absolutely. So Jason, tell us a little bit about your background. You know, after obviously we know you had the accident, what, what happened then? You know, like, where did you go? What did you do? What did that look like? And how did you get into this substantial resume of marathons, triathlons, and world champion Ironman? Like, how did that happen? Yeah, I'll, I'll back up a little bit. I, I um, first, uh, my accident, you know, I, I grew up racing motorcycles. So we, we raced 35, 40 weekends a year. And just having that mentality of, of always pushing myself and and trying to do the best for my body. And, and really I was going to be a professional motocross racer. That was, mm -hmm. was my goal. And, um, and so one day I was out practicing on my bike and I didn't see a rock and some grass. I hit it. It sent me flying. I landed straight down on my head and it compressed my spine and paralyzed me from just below the chest down. And, um, and so I'm fast forward, I don't know, six or seven hours and I'm in the emergency department and the physician says to me, um, I have good news and I have okay news said, so, you know, the, the, um, the not so great news is that you are never going to walk again. Mm -hmm. You paralyze, you know, that you're, you're paralyzed entirely from the chest down from T5. And, um, 
But the good news is people with your condition or your your um, injury lead normal active lives. And I'm going, I have no idea what that means. And, um, you know, you're talking to somebody who's um, working out, training, racing every weekend and a 17 year old. And um, and so really, I, I was fortunate to have really close friends and family. And um, and really, I took being a 17 year old and really took the injury with me with that same spirit. And um, and because of the discipline I had from sports and athletics and motocross, I really uh, six months after my accident, I borrowed a racing wheelchair from a friend of a friend and just started doing road races. Uh, the thing that sparked that interest was I was lying in the hospital bed and this was uh, a week and a half after my injury and the Boston Marathon was on the television. And I saw these guys in wheelchairs finish the marathon and I was like, wow, okay. You know, I, it just never had sort of crossed my path. And, um, and that sort of planted the seed. And, and for me, I was always so active. And so for when I got into road races and started just doing, getting out there, it took all my focus off of what I couldn't do and what mm -hmm. I could do. So it, it, it really just kind of made me at home with, with pushing myself. But the hardest part was starting all over. I mean, I had been in a sport that I'd been in for 11 years. And again, I was going to be a professional. It was, it was just my, um, my last amateur year. And, um, and so it was devastating in that sense. Um, but I think having really close friends and family and even my, you know, my high school raised the money for my first wheelchair and, and that community of racing wheelchairs is, is really small. And so right away, you just start learning, you start learning more from the people that are already went through the injury than, mm -hmm. than um, any of the medical professionals that, that, you know, in the rehab centers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that, that is amazing to have that mindset because some people can just take that and go, I'm done for life, you know? And yeah. Then yeah. You know, what's funny is I see it now uh, quite often and that, you know, it, it just shuts people down because I think it is so devastating in so many ways. Um, and I think just a combination of my personality and a lot of different things that it allowed me to move forward. And, it, and not only did I do that, I really kind of just kept taking it to the next level. I kept, uh, you know, I remember my first five mile road race and um, the winner came back three miles to meet me at like mile two. That's how slow I was to like make sure I was OK. Mm. And um, that was the, you know, the sense of the community. And um, and then fast forward a year and I, I complete my first marathon. Um, somebody gave me the um, the great wisdom to do a marathon in New Hampshire. Mm. Well, if you've ever been to New Hampshire, it's there's quite a few smaller mountains and uh -huh. um, and and a racing wheelchair on mountains is is not the best choice for your first marathon. Um, so it was quite a bit slower. So I didn't qualify because you have to qualify to to get into the Boston Marathon, and that was was my goal. Mm -hmm. And um and then fast forward another couple of months, I did my second marathon, qualified, and um and then in 1993, I was the the youngest competitor in the race um for the marathon, which was, was super cool and and um amazing. I, and I thought 26 miles was um was really hard. I was like, wow, this is, this is really hard. And in, and meanwhile, I'm just, I'm continuing to push myself and, and get better and progress. And then after about seven or eight years and about 35 marathons, um, I got bored with that. And I just kind of needed another challenge. And ironically enough on the television, again, I saw the Ironman triathlon world championship. And one of my childhood heroes growing up was this motocross racer, David Bailey. And um, I saw him finish it in a wheelchair. And I thought, well, how can somebody finish 2.4 miles swim in the ocean, mm -hmm. 112 miles on the bike through the lava fields of the Big Island, mm -hmm. and then and then followed by a marathon? Well, I figured, well, I got the marathon down, but I go, I've never really swam before, you know, except for in pools or lakes for, for recreation. And um, I didn't have a bike. And so I, I got a bike, I got a swim coach, and I just started... Um, with the, the smallest triathlon and um and they kicked my butt like <laughs> more than you can even imagine I was last out of the water and so slow on the bike and then I would pass everybody on the marathon or in in the uh, the racing wheelchair mm -hmm. which was was fun and um and then so I, I made you know going to the world championships my goal and and with this whole same mentality of just really pushing myself and it I'm leaving out a lot of the, the pain and heartache that's going along, <laughs> going that, that sort of happened in between that really um, not only learning my body, learning how it works, really tuning into 
what what things you know make it accelerate and do better and feel better and things that that don't and then also just the equipment and everything else that that goes with adaptive equipment and the challenges with that and so so there's a lot of up and downs for this this period of time but through it all i think doing hard things the more i did hard things the the sort of stronger i got it felt like and um and so i qualified for my first ironman world championship in 2004 about three years after starting triathlon and um i got to the big island and you have to finish the swim in a certain amount of time the swim and the bike cumulatively in a certain amount of time and um and i didn't make the time cut off i got really seasick in the swim and um and so i got i got pulled off the course after about oh, was it oh, like 11 and a half hours and after about eight hours on the bike i was just just too slow at that point i was too much of a, a beginner and um you know i'm at the world championship so it's the best athletes in the world and we're not just the wheelchair division it's with with all the able-bodied competitors as well on the big mm -hmm. island and um which makes it a really special event we have to make the same cutoffs as everybody with you know normal uh bodily functions and um and so I made it my goal at that moment to go back and finish, finish the race. And so I went to the trials the next year and I didn't make it. And I missed it by like 24 minutes. And I thought, Oh, I'm mm -hmm. trying harder and harder. And I go back the next year and I didn't make it. I missed it by about six minutes. I go back the third year and I go not only to the U S qualifier, but to the European trials. To, and again, you have to qualify for these races. And, um, and I missed it by just over two minutes and just a, about a minute and a half. And at this point, I am about four years straight of training with maybe six, seven weeks off and um, in between. And um, and there's, you know, the people around me are going like, is this worth it for you? Mm -hmm. Are you really having fun? Are you? And I, I probably wasn't, but I just was so stubborn that I wouldn't give up. And um, just really not knowing better. And um, in 2008, I made it my mission to not only complete it, but to win the race. And this mindset shift really allowed me to propel forward in, in a way that I, I hadn't expected. I went to the trials, I won them, qualified for the race, and finished second place that year in 2008. And um, everybody's like, well, you did it. You're, you're done. Like, that's it. And of course, you know, that spirit in me was like, you know what? I think I got to do it again. I have to win this race. And I went back and um, had an amazing battle with with um, a couple amazing athletes out there and ended up winning by a couple minutes. And um, yeah, just a, a really um, an amazing sport. And it challenged me is, challenges me in such a way that mentally, physically, there's just nothing more I can give, wow. uh, especially with, with my... Um, with the sort of the, the things that I have to sort of the challenges I have and and my level of injury again it's it's just below the chest so I don't have any abs or lower back mm -hmm. uh, and we're all in in one group and wow so, yeah that is That's just way yeah I know saying. I'm sure we we have over 600 people on here right now and we'll have thousands listening to the replay probably most people have never even thought about a 5k <laughs> right let alone a marathon and then to do that level, that magnitude, and to come out on top twice, yeah. world champion twice, that is just amazing. Jason, I have some pictures here to share with everybody. Are you okay if I share these? Yes, now? please. Kind of walk please us yes. Through? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm just, whew. I, I did a half marathon one time. That was, whew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good for a 5K, but. So you guys can you guys can see uh well a, a few motocross and and of course those awesome tube socks in the center there with my green yep. shirt. This here, awesome. Brent said yeah. this hat. He goes, he's part of the green team. The green <laughs> team hats are the fastest racers on the track. That's yeah. what he said first. He was like, "Yep, that he was good." Yeah, and you obviously see, you proved that to continue through your whole life. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, the, the 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 photo to the left of of that one is um my hand cycle. But you can see it's sort of a recumbent yeah. bike and um, we kind of lie really flat, which makes us aerodynamic. And I'm just using everything I have as far as is a muscle muscle function. And that puts me in a it's a custom custom bike. The other mm -hmm. ones that are more upright and leaning forward is my racing wheelchair that we do the run, the okay. run, uh, which is my favorite for sure. 
Okay, so this is actually the biking portion and this would be the running portion. Yeah, and the way that we do it for the swim is I have some plastic sleeves that I put over my legs mm -hmm. and that keeps them straight. And then it's just all freestyle um, swimming just like everybody else would. But so, wow. and actually a lot of people, you know, the able body athletes, they save their legs for the for the um for the bike and the run, which I guess I'm saving them for the whole race. So. <laughs> wow. And how many miles are you swimming? 2.4? Yeah, 2.4 miles. You know, and the challenging part, you're you're in the ocean. So you just never know what the conditions are going to be in the currents and 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 uh the early on the race we would um have it in waves. And so it um we started with eight eight hundred and fifty to a thousand people all at once. So you can imagine literally starting like you were in a washing machine <laughs> really intense and then it would take i don't know five or six minutes and then we'd sort of um uh filter filter out and, and it would thin out the little groups um but it was really intense but you can imagine the bike portion takes me it's 112 miles and um it takes me around seven to eight hours and so you're in you know 90 percent humidity and around the same temperature but the the pavement is um it heats up and it there's lava rocks all around you it's basically the the whole course goes through this big lava field and uh so it, it's just it's it's torture it really is it, it's like really the challenge is the conditions um even though the obviously the the volume is is pretty steep but you know i'll go back to what you said about it really doesn't matter i feel like if you're doing a 5k you're doing a 10k it's really the same process it's just um, I remember going out and doing like a mile my first time in my racing wheelchair. And I thought, I don't know how I'm ever going to do this. I don't know how people do this. It's so painful. It's so uncomfortable. And, um, and somehow I just kept pushing and I would just go a little further the next time. And, and when I did that five mile road race, I'd only done about three miles before that. And I thought five miles is a long way. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, even the marathon I thought was really long. And then when I saw somebody do it, do the do the Ironman that's 140 miles all all at once I thought well how are they doing that how are they conditioning themselves and now I know it's just really um about consistency and about you know finding finding that happy place where you um you're just really tuned into your body mm -hmm. yeah. yeah wow fantastic I'm so glad you sent me these pictures just amazing just oh wow so take us up to speed. So you, your last Ironman championship that you won was 2016, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, did you go after that again after the 2016? I have, I've actually been back, I think three times now. So I've, I've had a total of seven. Um, I've been to them seven and I'm actually going after my eighth this year. So I'm, the trials are in six weeks in, okay. in Cambridge, Maryland. And, um, so yeah, so I'm not done. I'm still competing at a pretty high level and, and um, I'm, I'm still getting stronger and faster as time goes on, which has been amazing. I just turned 50 um, last year. So mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of a special milestone for me to, to be doing it so long. I've been competing 45 years and mm -hmm. um, with everything that's happening. And, and since my accident, it's been 33 years. So just wow. um, with only a, a few minor injuries along the way. So yeah. Um, that's Super amazing. Happy and proud about that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about a segue here into you found out about LifeWave in 2020. How did you find out about this technology? Yeah. Ironically enough, I had just got done with Ironman in, in the fall of 2019 and I was really struggling with my immune system and I had had, um, so one of the challenges I have is, is really low circulation in my legs. And, um, and I had, um, I had a burn on my on my foot from a, a infrared sauna okay. and um and my body just wasn't recovering and healing after the race and i just and it was you know four or five months later and it just for whatever reason i just was struggling a bit and um and so someone introduced it to me and um uh, this technology that I, I was kind of i had posted something online and they said, I have this thing where you're willing to try it. And I, you know, at this point, I have no idea. I didn't even really know this person very well. And, um, and she, she introduced the technology and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm open-minded and I'm, I'm game for whatever that is. And, um, and I put the, they, she sent me the patches. She sent me about six patches. I put it on and, um, 
within two days, it had healed more than it had in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, okay, like something is happening here. And these are the stem cell patches, the X39. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so right away I called her back and, um, and ordered more and I've been using them since. Um, yeah. So that's, that was how it was introduced to me. Wow. And, um, and that's, but what, what was interesting about that is there was a bunch of other things that were happening. She sent me a sleep one as mm -hmm. well. And I took it that first night and, um, I could not believe the dreams I was having. I was like, wow, my sleep is so much deeper. And the dreams I were having were so much more vivid. I was like, okay, this is, and I tried it again the next night and the same thing. And I said, okay, this is not a coincidence. This is really freaky. And, um, you know, cause you're sticking a patch on your skin. And, um, I thought, well, it's worth a try and, and who knows. And, um, and so, yeah, so that's, that was how it was introduced. So you used X39 for six days in a row, right? They're asking if you had six patches on at one time. No. Yeah, no. So just just one at a time. I, I actually, um, I put it on my leg next to the wound. Um, now what I do is I, most of the time I just put it on my C7 vertebrae and um, uh, at night, actually, when I go to bed. And then I take it off when I get up in the morning. Um, sometimes usually a couple hours after I get up because I'm not mm -hmm. sleeping 12 hours. So, right. but it's basically on for 12 hours, off for 12 hours. Okay. And, uh, and the sleep one I, I put on when I go to bed and take it off when I, when my alarm goes off in the morning. So, so you use X39 at night? Uh, yes. Yeah. I That's tried it during the day and I didn't, it, it, um, uh, I, for me, recovery for my workouts is so important. And that's one of the things that, because I know it was helping, helping my tissue regeneration. I thought, mm -hmm. wow, there's, um, uh, another side story is I've gotten stem cells several times before. And mm -hmm. so uh, I knew what the effects of that were. And so that made so much more sense to me and how this builds tissue in the X39. And, um, and so I know that it's helping all my joints and everything else to, to recover better. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's why I take it at night. Okay. You know, what's interesting about that. So when we talk about the X39, we always talk about it as a daytime patch because it can increase energy and, you know, mental energy, physical energy. But what's interesting is my son, who is now 19 years old and has been a, you know, we had talked about that. He had been a motocross racer when he was younger and athlete, baseball, basketball, and big into bodybuilding. He always from day one has worn his X39 at night. He also wears X49. He puts both of them on before bedtime and then he'll take them off sometime the next day. I'm like, but you're supposed to wear them daytime. And intuitively he's like, no, I want them at night. And of course he sleeps like a baby, right? He'll sleep through a tornado. So yeah. that's interesting that you say that too. I've never heard anybody else say they use them at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, Yeah, for whatever reason, it, it, it's worked. And I, again, I have tried it during the day and noticed great results, but I... um. The recovery part for me is just so important. And actually, I have taken X39, I'm sorry, 49 mm -hmm. as well uh, while lifting several times. I actually only had a couple of weeks worth of those. Mm -hmm. And um, wow, the, the the strength improvement that I got from that was amazing. Yeah. And um, I, I've experimented with a few others as well. The pain one, I that for me blew me away. The, the mm -hmm. pain relief uh, patches, I uh, forget the name of it. Now. Ice Wave. Yes. yes. And um, within... 25 seconds it was it was a, a probably a 10 15 percent reduction and and like a, a really achy back and it, wow. it really it just blew me away I was like you got to be kidding me 15 seconds 20 <laughs> seconds yeah yeah was, so the ice really wave fun. it works very different you use the pan, the tan and the white correct yes yes and so you had low back pain did you put the white on the right and the tan on the left uh it was or upper yes upper back yeah yeah yep. yeah okay yeah Yep. yep. So this works to just open up energy channels. Pain is stuck energy. So we would put white on the right, tan on the left, or you could do the clockwise method if you needed to, if it's a, you know, to help open the energy channels up, but it's just, it's, it's an instantaneous, right? Ice wave, but not, again, not putting anything in the body. It's not going to repair anything, but it'll get rid of that pain for you. Now, X39, you've stayed consistent all these years patching that. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm about 90%. So some days I'll forget or or just whatever's happening. But uh, yeah. for the most part, yeah, I think yeah. I've, 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 
I don't miss many days, let's put it that way. I mean, I notice it's one of those things where when it's on there sometimes, uh, because I'm so used to it as being my norm, I'll, I'll kind of forget what it's doing. But then I'll take it off or I, I'll forget for a couple of days or something. And I'll be like, oh, something's off. Something isn't there. And then, and of course, any anything that's happening with my lower body where like a healing, a, a cut or a wound or something, which is really common for me. When I put those on, it is... It's night and day. It's night and day how fast my my wounds heal with with that, which tells me there's some real stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see about a 40% reduction in the healing time when we look at surgeries or injuries or wounds of any kind, accidents, breaks. Uh, we really see that, that, you know, just cuts almost that reduction or that, you know, that healing time in half almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be awesome if you actually shared the mechanism because I, I don't I don't entirely understand the, the yeah. Right. Yeah. absolutely I would be happy to do that so this is what a patch looks like when you take the backing off of it it's sticky on one side and smooth on the other it's non-transdermal so it's not putting anything into your body no chemical no nutrient no substance no herb nothing at all okay what David Schmidt, who's the inventor of this technology, has invented, which makes this work, <laughs> is what's inside of this white part. There's a lattice structure in there that is reflective. And so when I put this on my body, my body's heat or light that I emit, we're all about 98.6 degrees. And so that heat or low level infrared light is what hits this patch. Is it's communicating. It's called a biophotonic exchange of information, my light communicating with the light in the patch, okay? And so it immediately reflects back a very specific wavelength of light. And that wavelength of light elevates a peptide. So you put your patch on, you don't feel anything or see anything happening, but this exchange is immediate. And that peptide in your body, which peptides are proteins, chains of amino acids, right? The building blocks of our body. This elevates a very specific peptide. It's GHKCU copper peptide. And we don't have time to get into that tonight. You guys can go watch some of my recordings if you want to do like a deep dive into that. But that peptide is responsible for resetting your genes, uh, a third of them back to their young, youthful, healthy state. It's responsible for, you know, anti-aging skin, cardiovascular benefits, neurological benefits. We just see all kinds, wound healing, all kinds of stuff. But one of the things it does, it's responsible for activating those cells that you mentioned, Jason, that are responsible for repair and regeneration. Those master cells go to work. You activate them, you elevate them, you mobilize them when you put this patch on. And over time, which you're still patching, you're, you're now 50, um, but let's just say we recommend patching every day for 12 hours, at least one month for every decade you are old to wake up all those dormant master cells, get them doing whatever they need inside of the body to help repair and regenerate any damage, right? And also be able to reverse functionality. So think of organs in our body, systems, right? Our cardiovascular system, our neurological system, our immune system, okay? Digestive system. So we think about repairing these organs and systems in the body. And over time, the patch will do that because it elevates those master cells that are responsible. Now, why would you keep patching? Well, you keep patching because like you said, oh, I noticed something feels a little off. Wait a minute. I'm not as sharp, I'm not on my A game, right? Because we know mental clarity, physical, you know, all kinds of benefits. And so you can tell if there's like, oh, I forgot that patch today sometimes. And here's the beautiful thing, for the price of a cup of coffee a day, you're using something that's non-invasive. There's nothing entering the body. There's no contraindications. I'm sure you probably take different types of nutrients or supplements, things like that. I don't know if you're on medications, but even if someone is, we don't have any contraindications. This is something that works with your body to assist your body to get back into balance or to reverse functionality or to keep things young and youthful. You know, for me, when I started patching three years ago, there was nothing on my list, right? I've, I've done a lot of things holistically to take care of myself. I, my daughter uh, was, I would say, hospital injured when she was four, and she spent 15 years in a wheelchair requiring full care. 
feeding, changing, you know, everything. And so, you know, everything I did with her holistically, I did on myself. So when I came to this technology, we had done like you, we had done a lot of different types of stem cell therapy, hyperbarics, we did injections in and out of the country, you know, so this made sense because it was simple, it was accessible, it was affordable, it was easy. And so this technology allows anyone to have the ability to improve their quality of life, no matter what's going on. Yeah. That I love sense? that. Yeah. I love that. I love that you, you said that about the stem cells as well. Um, uh, I had had some, some health issues years ago now and had, again, just like you, you all um, spending thousands of dollars on stem cell therapy. And so this for a fraction of the cost, having this maintenance to, to be able to really know that I'm taken care of is, is a great yeah. peace of mind. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned some supportive patches and I know they're, they're going to ask. Um, so you mentioned silent nights mm -hmm. and you mentioned ice wave and they work differently. Okay. They trigger different processes in the body to be able to help assist in other things, pain removal, right. Um, sleeping to help you get in that deep rim sleep, like you said, dreams and, you know, to be able to, to have a better quality of sleep. You used X49 for a little bit, correct? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I had it for a few weeks and, um, absolutely, uh, was a difference. Yeah. Was a difference. And, and specifically around weight training, mm -hmm. I would, I would put it on for that. And, um, and it, I really, you know, cause there's so many subjective things that are happening with weight training. And I thought I can't be having my best day over and over. <laughs> and so that, that happened multiple times. And uh, I thought, wow, that's amazing. But uh, anyways, yeah. Have you used any of the other patches, Eon or Glutathione? Have you tried anything? I've tried else? Glutathione as well. Um, I noticed less from that um, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Glutathione's being, it's a, a detoxer or immune booster. So it's, yeah. it's like the master antioxidant. So you wouldn't probably notice anything because it's just going to work to chomp up free radicals in your body. That's what Glutathione yeah. does. Okay. Yeah. And it's funny because I had had a bunch of them sent to me at one point and had purchased a bunch of them as well. And um, and I think because I didn't know some of the, the real reasons why I thought, well, OK, you know what, I'll stick to these most basic yeah. ones. Now I've landed on the stem cell ones, which for me are really, like you said, the building blocks of everything in our body. And so mm -hmm. um, I think I get the most bang for for my dollar and everything else at, with those. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's the X39. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. You're using the patches, you're seeing changes, improvements, you're you're continuing to compete. So do you think there'll be a point when you stop patching or are you still going to keep doing it? That's a good question. Uh, I don't see a reason to not to not do it. You know what? I, I think because the uh, for me, it's a really safe thing. I'm, I'm super really picky, actually, about what I put in my body and what mm -hmm. what I put on it. And um, and I know that things can be really harmful and, and just not work in harmony, especially with the challenges that I have. And, um, and so because it's so great for my skin, I mean, I know one of the challenges for a paraplegic is, is just skin health and then immune system. And, and so this is mm -hmm. directly helping that. And so, uh, yeah, it, it just wouldn't make sense to, to stop. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, it really, and especially right now where I'm training, uh, 18, 16, yeah. 18, 20 hours a week. Um, right. for the next hopefully several months now um, to go to the Ironman trials and mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of stress on my body and so I know that it's helping me substantially yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. the same way a lot of people will ask me well when can I stop patching is this something I have to do for the rest of my life and I'm like when are you going to stop eating great food or when are you going to stop drinking clean healthy water when are you going to stop movement right exercises are those things you're just going to eventually stop one day yeah no, yeah. No. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That it doesn't. Yeah. It's a tool in our toolbox. We find tools along the way, right? We have things that we utilize to be able to help us in our game or, you know, at home or at work or whatever it is. And, you know, those, some of those things become non-negotiables. Yeah. That's a good point. Way. There's been so many things that I've tried and supplements and other things and stimulants and other things. And I've really kind of gone back to, you know, over time, I, th I think you just sort of weed out all the things that, that, you know, maybe help, but, but only for really short periods of time. And this, 
is not that. This is really one of those things that that stays with you. It's it, because it's the building blocks. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So they've got some questions. Are you okay to answer some questions, Jason? Yes, please. Absolutely. I promise I won't ask anything technical. Now you guys know that we're not going to talk about any diseases. Remember, okay, we're talking about organs and systems. You can talk, ask Jason questions about you know his patching or the journey or whatever that is. Uh, but don't. We're not going to go into anything else, right? We're staying with athletics, fitness, performance, recovery, wound healing. <laughs> when there's, you know, things like that, that happen. So Jason, uh, Mary Kay asks, where did you put the ice wave? She has um, some issues with her lower back and she's not finding a stop that gives her a spot that gives her uh, relief. So where did you, you said yours was more mid, is that correct? Yeah, it was mid to upper back. And so I, I, I put it really close to that, to those spots. Okay. And, um, I don't know if I just got lucky, but it, you know, again, within about 20 seconds, it, uh, I also tried it on my wrists and, um, um, for some arm stuff and, mm -hmm. um, I noticed it, it helped there as well, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a little bit tricky, especially cause I, I did it myself as well. So I'm like, you know, reaching back and trying to make sure I get the right spot and, um, but I didn't have to move it. It actually, it worked right away for me. Okay. Fantastic. And I think you said initially they're asking about placement on X39. Initially, you put it on the wounds you had, correct? And yeah, you know what? To... Go ahead. Yeah. And what I'll do, actually, sometimes I'll actually double up. Um, if I'm having something in addition to just the normal stuff, like I had a, a short sh shoulder for a few months, I put one directly on there and I'd put it on my neck, but I always put one on my neck at that yeah. C7. And I feel like that that I've been told that that's sort of the, you know, the power, the place where I get the most power and benefit um right total systemic wise um well that uh, c7 we have so many nerves that come into that vertebrae into that area and that's a, a spot that we know that mobilizes you know those master cells so using that patch on c7 is a pretty powerful point now for some people it's too much they're like Whoa, that's a lot of energy and we'll say we'll go below the belly button but i you know what they're going to ask i'm sure uh you know you put one on c v7 and then you put one on your shoulder so one patch is going to give you 100 percent of the efficacy that additional patch is going to give you about 20 percent more of a bump right and i know with my son basketball injuries i uh, had a couple of those you know we did two or even three of multiple patches x39 eon carnosine to really help heal that area fast over a short period of time you know like seven days yeah yeah i love that and you know what for me again i put it on when i have cuts on my on my legs and that this just happens usually when i'm crawling out of the pool or something like bumping myself up and, and hitting um and um and i put it on there and it it really i really notice a big difference i mean i can't it still just blows me to this day that it, it they heal so quick with yeah with the patches on yeah and you know probably too i would say this just from experience with other people when you have used this technology so long then all of those master cells are up and moving right they're all going they're all mobile just like when you were young 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 kid and so when something happens and you do have an injury or a cut or something they're all right there going boom not like a 50 year old but more like a 15 year old yeah yeah. Yeah, that's, absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. And yeah. they're asking me, have you ever used energy enhancer? Uh, I have not. I have not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're wanting to know if you, you know, they're wanting to know which, I know we said the patches you've used, but they're like, well, what about this? <laughs> <laughs> Has he used energy enhancer? And the reason probably why is we talk about energy enhancer. That's the first patch that David invented. And energy enhancer looks just like Ice Wave. It's a two patch system. He invented yeah. this when he was working with the Navy SEALs. Do you know this story, Jason? I do. I have heard it. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. And so it does very similar to Ice Wave in that it opens up energy channels, triggering beta oxidation. Uh, but the energy enhancer increases stamina, endurance, and of course helps it turn over that lymphatic system. So a lot of times athletes will use it to improve their game, right? Or to improve their, their run. Yeah. 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 Okay. Probably cool. something I need to add to my repertoire. It sounds like. Yeah. yeah you might, might want to 
want to think about it. Might want to think about it. Uh, so question I'm going to answer this one. They're asking some questions also that would kind of be just uh, general. I don't know if you have any tattoos, Jason, but they want to know if you can place a patch over a tattoo. And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, you can. So here's the thing with your body. I want you to understand that you from head to toe emit light or heat. We can see this through thermal imaging. Where do you live now, Jason? Uh, Massachusetts. Okay, so you're East Coast with me. It's dark outside right now. Yeah. And so if we were to go outside, we probably couldn't see neighbors down the road or animals. I live out in the country, so there's lots of animals in the woods. We don't go out at night because of how dangerous they are. So we kind of stay in the house. But if we were to go outside, we couldn't see the animals or the neighbors unless we were looking through night vision goggles. Okay, so we know thermal imaging, we can see the heat or light being emitted off the body. That's happening everywhere. And so when you put this patch on your body, no matter where you put it, you can put your patch right here. Doesn't matter. You can put it at the back of your neck. You can do below your belly button, the bottom of your foot. I don't care. But wherever you put it, it's going to immediately work with your body's light or heat to activate that specific peptide or trigger that specific process like beta oxidation in the body. And so it doesn't need you to have it a certain spot, or if you have something on your body, like a tattoo, you don't need to worry about, oh, you know, I can't put it here, a scar even, right? Is it going to work through the scar? It is going to work through the scar because it's working with that heat. And we know that comes off the body about two to four inches. So that kind of makes sense, I think. Okay. So you talked a little bit about the injuries, you know, and, and using the patch on location. So what do you think about if, if someone has, so if someone, let's say someone has a, like a knee injury, right? Okay. Yeah. Would you, would you say use your X39 and put an additional one on the knee to help through that process? Yeah, that's what I did. I had actually had a torn rotator cuff in my shoulder, so partially torn. And um, I put that on there and um, absolutely it made a difference. It made a difference. I mean, it didn't heal it entirely, but it, it um, I'm, and, and of course I'm not slowing down either to, um, to yeah. really um, maybe allow it to, to heal, it, being that I use it every day for everything that I do using my arms. Um, but I, I did place it on that and it was torn and it absolutely helped. Okay. Help with that. Yeah. yeah, so they yeah. Would, it would work for the knee as well, too. Okay, so Shirley Sullivan is on here. She said you used to be neighbors. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's from Rhode Island, but she lives in Florida now. Awesome. So neighboring state. Love it. <laughs> All right, so Jason, question about it. Will they work if they get wet? Uh, absolutely. I I mean, I, I'm. I wear mine uh, if I'm ever using it during the day in the pool and I shower, I've showered with it as well at night and, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it doesn't stop working. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I think a lot of times people think, oh, if it gets wet, then that, that white part in there is, is not going to work anymore. And if you look at it again, this part is sticky and this part is smooth. So these are two different 3M hypoallergenic polymer shells. So that white part is sandwiched in between that, which makes it completely waterproof. Okay, so that white part, it's not entering your body anyways, but it makes it completely waterproof. So, and remember David started initially with the Navy SEALs. So they're swimming, right? They're out on Navy. He was on many submissions working on submarine types of survival equipment for the SEALs. And then from there, he went to Stanford University with Richard Quick, who is a six-time USA Olympic swim coach and was working with the female gold medalist athletes. So again, we're swimming in pools every day and I live in Florida, so it's hot. You know, we, we're heating up down here big time now. We're going to be 90 all the way through probably October, November now, 90 plus. And so it's, we're getting, we got hot and we're sweaty, but it's still working. So swimming, sauna, showering, sweating, all of the above, you're going to be good to go. All right. So they're asking about water. How important do you think it is to stay hydrated I mean, obviously in general, but while you're patching. 
Uh, that's a good question. You know what? I, I haven't um, I haven't experimented with how I feel or really noticed how I feel when I'm. Uh, that being said, I mean I'm just always drinking uh, electrolytes. Um, maybe less water and more electrolyte water. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, just for my athletics, I know if I'm dehydrated by the afternoon, like my energy will be zapped. I'm like, have I drank my water? And so you know, I I know right away. That's the first thing I check for or you know I, I recall and um so absolutely but you know what I, I don't i'm not sure that i can really answer that question as far as how well they work uh, hydrated or not hydrated yeah i haven't but you're always hydrated <laughs> yeah and also i'm taking it at or i'm using my x39 at night so mm -hmm. um while i'm sleeping so i don't yeah you're not drinking while you're sleeping not so much not so much. That's a good thing. So as far as water, we know our general rule of thumb is at least half your body weight in ounces. If you're exerting yourself, exercising, you're probably going to need to drink a little bit more than that to be able to compensate, right? But we, but like you mentioned with electrolytes, we really want to pull the, the water into the cells and tissues to stay hydrated. So this is a light technology. We need water for the conductivity for our cells, okay? The electrical communication that's happening inside of the body. We like to use Celtic sea salt. Uh, it has 92 trace minerals. I'm a big proponent of amino acids and electrolytes and, you know, all of that, not Gatorade. You know, we want healthy, good, clean things. Um, but to be able to help keep your body hydrated is really important. It's very, very important. So... Question from Dr. Ray. He says, can you share with us if you have seen positive impacts in your mental clarity during your training with patching? That's a good question. You know what? Um, I know that I'm sharper just in general. Like I said, the the um, what I notice is when I don't take it, it's not as much as when I do take it, but when I'm not, I just feel a little bit off. Mm -hmm. And that's as much mental as it is just sort of a low level energy mm -hmm. that I have when I'm not, when I'm not using or not patching. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's so subtle though. You know, there, it's one of those things. It's not, you put it on all of a sudden you're like, you're, you got this, for me, I don't have this burst of energy. It's more of this subtle, like really healthy, sustained, um, source of vitality, I guess I could call it. And yeah. you put so much demand on your body every day, mentally, physically, emotionally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially with my injury, it, it um, it takes everything I have to do to do. Well, first, I think just to get through the day, usually most days, mm -hmm. uh, but but to do the the Ironman triathlons and to, to push my body like that, it it um, yeah, it it's it remarkable. Everything that I give it, everything good that that I feed it and it, it really absorbs those just, um, I'm so sensitive to anything that I put on my body or in my body. So, mm -hmm. and I think probably most people are today because of, you know, the chemicals and toxicity we've been bombarded with Heidi. I don't know if you remember Heidi Johnson or not. She said she remembers you from April, 2020 and you have age reversed. <laughs> and I'm going to say too, looking at the one picture that you shared, I'm going to share this again really quickly. I don't, I want you to tell me when this picture was, when was this picture right here taken? Uh, that was, I think actually just before, it may have been just before I started patching. Because this picture here compared to what you look like now, you do look younger. Yeah. When, yeah. I, when I looked at you, I'm like, you don't look like the same person in that picture. Yeah. And you know what? It, I, I think you're right. And I'm pretty sure that was, that picture was in Arizona, which is right before I started patching. I think actually I had um, someone to take some photos for me. So yeah, that's, that's funny. You say that. Yeah. Well, I'll Heidi brought it up. Thank Heidi. you, Heidi. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. He's been patching that long too. So that's fantastic. All right. Let's see. We've got a couple more questions um, as far as, uh, Shirley wants to know, oh, Shirley wants to know if you would not mind, she would love to get in contact with you uh, to be able to plug in with like-minded people in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. She is um, that like driving from Tampa or to Orlando, whatever. She'd like to reach out to you. Awesome. Yeah, please do. Okay, yeah. fantastic. 
yeah the best way is is probably via my social media either instagram or or um or uh, facebook okay Jason, 13. wonderful thank you uh, so question on the efficacy of patches after expiration date. They have about an 18-month shelf life. Um, after that, we don't recommend using them. So I would, if they're past 18 months, toss them. But use them, but we don't know, right? We're not really for sure. Okay, so let me double check here and make sure they're talking about other some other stuff here. We're not going into any of that. Um, okay, so if you're using X39, so Denise is using it during the day, and X49 that evening, do you need to let the body rest? No, you don't. Every patch activates a different peptide or a different process in the body. So every patch has its own 12 hour window. So when you put on X39, it needs to be on 12 hours. You activate, elevate, mobilize all those master cells, up, elevate the peptide, right? All the things, then you take it off, your body needs a break. Because like you heard, you know, recovery is important. And so we take it off. We need that time. You put on a different patch, right? A lot of people patch aloe vita at night. You said you've used silent nights at night. And so that has its own window. We don't wear it 12 hours because we don't sleep 12 hours. But typically, you know, you're eight, whatever hours a night you're sleeping, you're patching. That's the window for that. The other ones like aloe vita, we're using that all 12 hours because of what it does. So it's important you want that one 12. Okay, so does it matter what type of water? What do you think about the type of water? Filtered, uh, distilled, tap? Yeah, I, I've used some um, uh, filtered. I have a special osmosis um, uh, filter that I that I use, and and um, I've, I've experimented with some hydrogen water, and that I'm not sure that I noticed much of a difference with that. But anyhow, that's yeah. Yeah, for me, we have an RO system. We have a filtration in our house, you know, shower and all that kind of stuff. Um, I love, um, you know, like mineral water, lemon, lime in my water. Of course, you know, the Celtic sea salt and electrolytes, amino acids. I think the key is to stay away from like plastic, you know, the, the heart, you know, just the toxic, you know, or your fluorinated water, all of that kind of stuff is just going to cause more damage in the body than it is. Ah, oh, good. Um, so Kath, oh, Kath, yeah, Kath is on here. She's a quadriplegic for almost 40 years. I met Kath a um, couple times now. She says she loves energy enhancer, so it might be a, a recommendation. I think she's giving. Awesome, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, she's on our team, so. Oh, somebody, Brian's wanting to know if you've seen the Iron Cowboy. Do you know him? Yes, I followed his story. I wanted to go out and, uh, if any of you know, he did, um, a hundred Ironmans in a hundred days or, um, and, um, amazing endurance athlete. And, um, uh, I wanted to go out and, and actually be present, but I, I wasn't able to, but yes, I know his story. It's so cool. So mm -hmm. inspiring and also just crazy what the body, human body can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Okay. So Jenny, yes. Yeah, circling her back around on Trey. So Trey currently is using X49 and carnosine every single day. In the beginning, he used X39 and Eon. We didn't have X49. And then he would use energy enhancer on the court, basketball, running. He'd use carnosine for recovery. And then when X49 came out, which was maybe six months into our patching, he started using 39-49 combo. And that's when you saw those gains in the gym with squat and deadlift and you know bench press and all that kind of stuff. And then he just got to a point where probably in the last year, I would say, uh, where he's been just X49 and carnosine. And he does those at night too. He, like I said, he's a nighttime patcher. Uh, he'll put them on the sides of his hip. <laughs> I don't know why, but again, he's, you know, he's, he's intuitive boy. So he's going to do what he wants to do, but that's what he's doing currently. And if he feels like a little stuffiness going on or whatever, which doesn't happen very often, then he'll put on two glutathione or something like that. Uh, but when he had his injuries, you know, X39, Eon, uh, Carnosine were the ones that he used, but yeah, he's currently using the 49 and Carnosine daily. And he is 19, so he has tons of his own master cells. But I always recommend, you know, kind of clean out the cobwebs, right? If you're younger, yes, you got plenty of them. But, or if you do have some injury or damage, it's, you know, it's going to help your body to recover, of course. So let's share that with you. 
All right, aloe vita is a 12 hour patch. All patches are 12 hours, take them off and put them back on, new day, right? A new patch the next day. Jason, have you felt any return of sensation to the damaged nerves since using the patches? Uh, I have not, I have not. Yeah, my, my injury was a complete sever of the spinal cord mm -hmm. and um, there's really nothing that's, that's um, increased any of my sensation or, or function in that, in that regards, yeah. Okay, great question. That's good to know because we have some people that have that have been in wheelchairs and have gotten out or have had, you know, limited mobility and gained more mobility. So every injury is very different. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, I wish mine I wish I would have had the, the product when I first was injured when that when that was fresh. I know it's you know more likely to be impactful in that that first year, yeah. that period of time. Yeah, I wish I would have had it for my daughter with when she had, she had a brain injury, a traumatic brain injury from a surgery, um, had massive bleed. So yeah, I wish we would have had that too. Well, we're on our journeys, aren't we? <laughs> we're, all, yeah. we're all on the path we are and we persevere and we, we go through. Okay. One last question they were asking earlier again, and I know you mentioned it, but I think, you know, sometimes there's a lot of information. So your rotator cuff, where were you patching? You were patching X39 on it. Yeah. Yeah. I would do two. So I would do one on my neck always, again, always. And then I would do directly on the tear. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. and that, that I definitely noticed that it, that it, that it helped with that recovery process. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have surgery or anything. It just was, um, it's still partially torn. So I, I often, every once in a while, if it's flaring up or something like that, I, um, mm -hmm. I'll stick it on there and it'll, it'll help. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Jason, thank you so much for taking time to be on here, for sharing your story, for sharing all your pictures and your experience and your, your life with us. I know we're going to be all now, we, you know, hundreds and thousands of people are, are going to be sending you lots of prayers and positive vibes and, you know, all the good energy for your upcoming race and training for the next 18 months for that next Ironman. So we are just so grateful for you and just so appreciative that you took the time out because I know this is going to help a lot of people in our community to be able to, you know, just hear from, uh, from another athlete that's doing it, right? You're, you're doing the things, making things happen and using this technology as one of your tools. So thank you. Do you have any last words, anything you'd like to share with everybody? Uh, well, first, just thank you. Thank you so much for having me it's been it's been amazing having a conversation and and i'll say you know sometimes people say well you're sort of extraordinary or something that's beyond the norm um doing iron man triathlons and, and as i said earlier i think whether you're doing a 5k you're a housewife you're a whoever you are and whatever you're doing um taking care of your body and and that it's it's all possible and good and and that this i think this life wave can help you with that as well but but um to just because it's hard doesn't mean we can't do it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, there's a will, there's a way. I like it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jason. Thanks. I appreciate you. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you. Same to you all. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, guys.